Hi, this is Eric at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm, and this is Florida Natural Farming. And today I'm going to uh, do a taste test on our koi mak, because we have ripe fruit, and the cashew, because we have ripe cashew. And I'm up at the front, so I'm gonna work my way to the uh, mature trees that have the fruit on them in the back, or in the middle of the property, and um, look at some other stuff, and look at some seedling koi mak, and uh, seedling cashew. But I'm here at this one of our Adamoya trees. So we have like 100, like 100 sugar apple trees in the picture, the cover picture. That's a Kampong Ma of sugar apple. And they're just now coming in. And this is a Geffner Adamoya. And it's, uh, they're getting, uh, Big. I've eaten a couple fruit off this. I love Adamoyas. Uh, they are one of my favorite fruits for sure. <clears throat> I've had Lisa. They're a poor producer and so I don't even bother growing it. And I, I only had one tree so at my other place of Lisa. So maybe maybe they're a better producer. Uh, if you have more trees I could have found out but I'm not even going to bother. Uh, because I love Priestley Adamoyas. Uh, they produce really well. Guffner's produce really well. I like Guffner a lot, but Priestley is definitely much better. So we have over 315 bananas. You're starting to see, or 315 bananas, not including the pups that I divided. And easily we have 50 racks going on right now. Uh, it took me a while to build up to that. It's a lot of work but I'm pretty good at it and I'm excited for our bananas. And we do everything dry farm. This is an achachiro tree, which is why we started this farm. Uh, we have more than 500 achachiros, most of them seed grown. A lot of our achachiro, bigger ones are getting, not a lot, but our bigger achachiro are getting of size where this is a ruby supreme guava. We don't get worms in our fruit. We don't. That's what the difference between organic growing and conventional growing is if you do organic correctly which is basically just remove yourself from the system and apply quality manures and don't micromanage everything for fruit fruit trees uh you're not going to have any pests and disease issues period unless they well, they do come from the nurseries so um all these people that have these issues it's because of the way you're growing Florida is the easiest place to grow organically in the world. I'm positive of that, or at least one of the easiest places. I'm sure there's other areas that are comparable to this, but um, those are all the uh, sugar apples. We still have sugar apples. I could see one on the tree there, but they're uh, kind of taking a lull right now. We, at our beach house, we have sugar apples that produce year round. The trees don't lose their leaves. The, tr le the trees lose their leaves here and they have not produced sugar apples year round because of that, I'm sure. But unfortunately, the sugar apples at our beach house are the soft, mushy type, which they have an inferior flavor. I'm able to say that because I grow them in two different places and I do have more than a hundred. I have more than five at our beach house and they're all the mush sugar apples and we don't even bother picking them. <clears throat> I know it's wasteful, but they're just disappointing. They don't have the flavor of the chewy sugar apples. And the Kampong Mauve Red sugar apple, as you saw in the picture, just doesn't produce well. We have about 50 Kampong Mauve, or 30 Kampong Mauves. No, 19, 19 Kampong Mauve. We're switching over to all chewy red sugar apples, so I'm growing those out right now. Stuff's looking very good. The Garcinias are looking great. Everything's looking fabulous. <clears throat> fabulous. So I'm gonna do a little taste test on the uh, Klein Mac. I'm gonna stop and get some of these uh, Garcinia gardnerianas um, that are growing here, or fruiting here at the moment. It's not real a big fruit moment, but here we can get uh, a bunch of fruit every day. Uh, enough for us uh, and probably enough for another family if we wanted, uh, you know, between bananas, sugar apples, atamoyas, guaymac. I love these.
Carson is. Really, Brazilianses is, I'm not gonna pick a bunch, because then I end up eating them and it sounds like I'm eating the whole video. It gets me distracted. They're very good, I try to eat them every day. They seem to produce year round, the Garcinias. I thought Chiro hasn't started doing that yet, but I'm certain that it's possible. Fruit trees stop producing when it gets too hot. That's why Arizona, you have so much trouble. I'm positive that's why you're not getting fruit off your MB trees in Arizona because of the heat. It's just not meant to grow in the desert like that with the heat. Look at that rock of bananas. They're all ice cream bananas. There's a achachiro that's getting quite large. Not the largest of the second group, but that's like the third group, but that's the largest. Sigigium, rose apple, rose apple. There's a little kumquat that I've been filming for years, it's finally taken off. Look at how healthy that is. Citrus prefers to be in the shade. In fact, I think bananas prefer to be in the shade. We have bananas that are producing nice racks in full shade, so. <clears throat> uh -huh. We have the Nakli latifolia, the African peach. Uh, it's right here. It's getting quite large. It's all the way over there, those big leaves. This is it right here. Uh, I'm pretty sure we're gonna be getting fruit off this probably Next year, I'm thinking, if not next year, soon after that. This is a fruiting, quima, or <laughs> fruiting cacao tree. This is the yellow ribbed. We have three different types of cacao we grow from seed. We fruit, have fruited this. This is a, a tree that I, or from a tree I fruited and grew the seeds here. It's about a, a seven year old tree. I'm just gonna look at my aeroids. I started planting my uh, anthuriums and my uh, philodendrons and my monsteras in the ground. So they're looking good. <clears throat> we don't have any trouble growing the hard to grow anthuriums or the hard to grow philodendrons like luxurians and anthurium regale or the waraquianum. <clears throat> it's very easy organically. Uh, so this is a Nangara intense philodendron in the ground. This is a Gloriosum philodendron in the ground. This is a SP Columbia philodendron in the ground, and it has flowers. This is one I got at uh, Walmart, I think, of all places, but it's a beautiful philodendron. They had some name for it, but who knows what it is. So I just put an anthurium in the ground over here that wasn't doing very well above ground. And then I noticed that this Anthurium <coughs> viterifolium is blooming. I guess you can breed them. I see pollen on there and you can cross pollinate the Anthuriums and some of them will cross. So they come out with new species. Doc Block does that and um, uh, a bunch of people in the Philippines and in Indonesia and uh, uh, Taiwan do it that I've seen. It's truly amazing. I love aeroids. There's more citrus that we grow. I'm not sure which one this is. I don't mark my trees. All our citrus is seed grown. <clears throat> when I say don't disturb the soil, we don't walk on the soil. We have paths that we take. And before I had before I had mowed paths, I just had little paths like this, but I knew where they were. But then people started wanting to come over here and see, and people would say they were, you know, they couldn't deal with this. Well, you don't have to, it's my farms. <laughs> so it's like, uh, it's, it's strange. <clears throat> strange that people would have an opinion on what I'm doing here <clears throat> and tell me about it. But I've since mowed this. This is the first path I put in, or mowed. It's a Speriorum, Philodendron Speriorum. Look at this one. This is like a really nice one. They're starting to size up because they're attached to the tree. The leaves got trashed on this because of the wind from the 
the hurricane that went to the Gulf Coast, but look at this, getting big. These leaves get about three to five feet. So when it gets up the tree, it's gonna be really nice. And the orchids, orchids do not need to be watered in Florida. They don't need to be fertilized in Florida. They will bloom for you year round in Florida, this part of Florida. There's another Achachi Iro. Just trying to uh, help people grow um, to help Florida to, you know, it's our groundwater is severely polluted. In fact, they predict in seven years, we're gonna be out of fresh, clean water. Just too easily to destroy Florida because we're on sand. But yet, <clears throat> all the people that teach, teach to put in a, a mowed lawn as an orchard floor, strips in between, and then they spray glyphosate on the trees. Or not on the trees, but on the grass around the trees. So it's just a compacted soil. Well, then they don't, then, then they think you need to apply calcium because it makes the fruit sweeter. We're on calcareous rock, it's pure calcium, but if water cannot move through your soil because your soil is compacted, then, oh, let me look at that other Quimuk tree, let me focus, then it's just gonna run off. And that's why they have to water. I'm positive that's why. Here's another Achachiro. It's learned behavior. behavior. I've, I've talked about it recently a lot, it's dogma. So we have two different types of fruiting Kwaimak tree. The Kwaimak, the Kwaimak has been very, this is it. This is my tree I've had the longest. And I planted it out here. I bought it from Montosa Gardens when they still sold fruit trees more than eight years ago. And um, they stopped selling fruit trees about eight years ago. And I uh, planted it right there in, a, in the lawn because this was all lawn and I kept the lawn and added wood chips. I didn't water, it survived. It, look how big it is. But stuff just didn't grow and I thought it was the water. So I started watering. Well, it started killing stuff and stuff still didn't grow. So I stopped watering. Just certain trees I connected to the water. I never connected any mangoes to the water. I could see that mangoes obviously didn't need any water, period. Because I'd been growing them at our beach house for so long. And so I put it here and then I had to teach myself how to tell how to how to make stuff grow, get stuff to grow in Florida. And really all I needed to know was to stay off the stay off the soil. Don't like don't mow it and don't walk all over it and don't pack it down. Just like the the sand dunes. It's exactly like the sand dunes where they've taught people to stay off the sand dunes because it destroys the soil that protects them from erosion. Well, they destroy the soil here that's by mowing on it, mow, uh, mowing it, and water just runs right off of it. So they have no calcium cycle to fall back on. And if you don't have the calcium cycle, you're gonna need to add all the other uh, chemicals and nutrients. But anyway, I've gone over that. I need to talk, this was a, about the focus on what I was talking about. So this is a seed grown Quimuk. They can take a while if you're not watering, but we're on the slow path. We work in time and space. Time and space heals. Time and space is what nature does. And that's how we work. That's our basically our farm plan. I can wait. Trees are not meant to be rushed. <clears throat> that's how the citrus industry got in the position they're in. That's a, a pomelo tree. I'm gonna go over here and look at a, a cashew seedling, it's a Ingus spectabilis. Seed grown, most of our trees are seed grown. <clears throat> but the mangoes, well, I was gonna say most of our mangoes, we have 250 grafted mango trees, about plus or minus a few. Um, I haven't counted them, but we lost about 20 to 30 in the freeze two years ago. So this is a like a one year old cashew from seed. And it was small and I wanted to see what would happen if I dumped a pile of manure next to it, because that's what I do. I apply inputs every day throughout the farm. I move around and apply it throughout the farm, never in the same place twice until the following year. And I try to put it next to the trees before I used to try to spread it out, like fling it through the, the orchard floor. But I discovered that if you put a big pile next to a tree, 
it's just grass with piss and, a, and like 20 pounds of manure from a day from our barn, about 100 pounds of wet peat on hay. And this cashew just, it just, it's almost as tall as me. So I imagine next year it could produce fruit, if not next year, the following year. I'm kind of surprised that cashew is not a cash crop here. It's that easy. <clears throat> it's so freaking easy. It's uh, surprising that it's just not being grown on a commercial scale here to me, because you'll see when we get to the cashew tree, uh, it doesn't require water. There's my little philodendrons on the tree. I forget to water my uh, philodendrons that are in pots up against the trees, but since they've been growing in biological soil, if they have a hole in the bottom of the pot, then they're able to communicate through the hole and <clears throat> get water. So I don't have to worry about them. It's kind of a weird concept that nobody even talks about, but that's how we do it. <clears throat> I'm slowly putting them in the ground though. This is that uh, hog plum. Oh, I forgot to look at the June plum, that round one. We have the short June plum, but I guess that's another story, another episode. This is a wax jambu, wax jambu. They haven't produced this year, oh, uh, much. They did produce both years, but not, usually it's like they're covered in fruit since the freeze, but I think next year, here's a rack that's not just not very big. <clears throat> I just kept pulling too many pups off of the off of the racks. This is that big Inga ice cream bean that's Inga Vera and hasn't hasn't given us fruit, which is kind of surprising. So I bought seeds of all kinds of different Garcinia dolces. I'm pretty sure that this is Garcinia uh, um, Madruna. <laughs> but I uh, I got the, you know, the, the sweet one from Australia. Uh, I guess they call it Russell's Sweet. Um, and planted seeds. Uh, uh, here's our little mangoes from this year that I have, uh, that are popping up. I direct sow our mangoes. So I say, I don't know how many seedlings we have, but I know that I planted more than 400 mango seeds this year. It's <coughs> our jackfruit. Um, It had a, oh, there it is, yay. We got fruit, this this little grafted tree has produced fruit for the last two years, so I'm positive we'll have fruit this year. It's a delicious, crunchy yellow variety, small, very small fruit. So are raw sapotes. We have, uh, egg, uh, you know, egg fruit. We have uh, fruit on our uh, canistel trees. Tree, the raw sapotes got attacked by the cold two years ago and they were producing up until then, but uh, they started flowering again this year that well, the biggest one got hacked back. So here's our Kwaimak tree. So this is where I'm gonna do the taste test. And this tree was covered in fruit. Kwaimak has been so tricky. This is a grafted tree from Excalibur. Richard personally went and found it for me um, or told the people where to look. And it was about this big, I bought four of them. They were covered in that black soot. Um, they're black, pretty much. Um, the leaves were black, and I just put it here in the lawn again with the four others sporadically around. This is the only one that survived, it's, um, and it's doing really well now. It doubled in size this summer, and they fruit, or they flower pretty much year-round, but this has gone through such a growth spurt. This is all new growth from here up, so it's grown more than... Uh, a foot just on this branch. But it was covered in fruit and during the drought. And then when it rained, it dropped all the fruit. There were tiny little fruits, but it's always done that when it got very wet. Except for it held some, there's one right there. So here's the ripe fruit. And they're like jackfruit, so they can ripen up after they've been picked. This one definitely ripens up. They're so soft and um, so soft and you eat it skin and all. And they're quite gorgeous. Oh, I forgot how good they are. Oh my God. Maybe I'm gonna go back to this being my favorite fruit. I had decided that mangoes were my favorite fruit this year. Uh, our mangoes from Zills and India, of course. Kizar was definitely the top mango this year along with 
I would have to say buttercream um, uh, that had crossed with uh, a sweet tart. So it was a, a buttercream with a sweet tart flavor uh, and texture. Or no, a, a, a buttercream texture. The te something about the texture of the buttercream is just phenomenal. It's just like, it just, they do it for me. So this fruit is so good. See how soft it is? And, hmm. There's one seed. That's so good. Mm. It's so complex. It's got the perfect sweet tart flavor. Acid. It's just a nasty looking little fruit though, but you don't want to waste any of it. It's just almost like it's been eating, but they have the same phytochemicals as pomegranates. I forget what it is. I did a video of it. Um, and so they're very, a powerhouse of phytonutrients. And of course, you know, the leaves all contain probably more phytonutrients than the fruit. Um, people are just in the U.S. are just not aware of that. I tried to push that a lot because I believe in the teas, like the mango leaf teas and the fruit leaf teas mixed together. Okay, so this one had four big fruits or seeds. The fruit is so yummy, but I'm still going to have to stick with mangoes because the mangoes here blew my mind. They blow everyone's mind. I know when people don't eat mangoes, if I give them a mango because they don't say anything about it. If I give them, I test them. I give them one of our best mangoes and it's ripe. And I say, it's ripe. Eat it today. And if they don't eat it, I know they, or if they don't text me, I know they didn't eat it. Only two people. Only two people of all the people, I, and I gave them to a lot of people. Of the, all the people I gave them to, never texted me. Well, one of them texted me back. I know they gave it away because they say, oh, I let my daughter have them. And she said they were incredible, but they were both my neighbors. One was the surgeon next door who's like, I don't know what's wrong with him, but I haven't seen him. Um, but he's like been destroying the property next door, cutting down the old trees. It just makes me sick. So I'm putting these seeds in here. I know I've uh, our seeds usually all germinate, but somebody said our Quimux seeds didn't germinate, um, which would be a first, but some of mine didn't germinate, so it's possible. I don't give guarantee on seeds. Uh, I'm going to give them a replacement, uh, but I only have four seeds, so it's they bought five seeds, but they dropped some on the ground, so I don't know how many they need and couldn't find them. So uh, here's our cashew tree. That it's a huge giant tree and that right there. It doesn't look that big because you can't really see because of all the other stuff going on in here, but it's a big tree. It takes up about, I don't know, maybe it, it takes up a lot of room. <clears throat> and if the weather's cooled and it started fruiting or, you know, pretty, it's had been flowering, but it hadn't set any fruit. In a while and now it's starting up again so I showed this this fruit two days ago and it wasn't even plump when it's producing it goes from super skinny and no size to that uh, the uh, cashew apple that's the top part the bottom part is the nut it's toxic so you have to like heat it up to uh, neutralize the acid in it I just plant the seeds I don't eat the. I want it for the juice here's a ripe one really nice juice. It's as good as citrus, if not better. I don't really like overly sweet stuff and citrus. Well, I would never drink Florida citrus, period, because I, I just can't believe anybody would drink it. Now, they tell you not to drink it. People from Europe don't buy Florida citrus juice <clears throat> because it's full of all the chemicals that are causing everyone's health problems. I don't care what you say. I know that's what it is. Um, and there's fruit or flowers. The other side has lots of flowers. I don't see a lot of more flowers, but this produced so much fruit. Usually it, oh uh, yeah, it's doing it. There's more fruit. It produces for eight months out of the year. It produced so much fruit. I planted 200 seeds of it this year. So 
Uh, that's why I'm saying I'm surprised that this is not grown on a commercial scale because it's just that simple. And I put all this manure around it. These were like huge piles. This is, I, that's why I say when it's manure, most of it's hay. This is it, but there's one of the manures. It's pure humus. It's not really like regular manure. It's, you could grow, uh, you could take that and break it up and soak it in water and start seeds in it. Look at all those mushrooms under there. See them all? It's like totally fungally dominant soil here. Because <clears throat> we use low nitrogen animal inputs. And we stay off the soil and we focus on soil health. So I'm going to do a little test of this cashew um, while I'm right in front of it. So I usually chop the top off, but you could just pull the seed out. I just don't want to. Um, I'm going to do it. It's kind of hard to hold the thing. So I pulled the seed off. I'm just going to plant that in the ground. I, I push them like right like that. Right, in, I poke a hole in my finger and I put them in the ground. And I'll show you one I did this year because I just saw it. So then it's full of juice. And it's like, it's clean and it like does so much juice and it's not sticky and it just keeps giving and giving and giving and giving and giving. And they make a liqueur out of this in India. And they have like, ancient like like uh built-in uh areas that i've seen online where they just g spash it like they do grapes with their feet and the juice all goes into a, a cistern i guess and they ferment it but if you you could just keep squeezing juice out it's like a sponge that never dries out it's really amazing it's an amazing i mean look at that so I juice it with a juicer. The skin makes it kind of, uh, uh, gives it a funky taste. So don't eat the skin, but here, I'll put the seed down so I could do this some more. I mean, it's just, and it's so good. It's very sweet, but not sweet. It's, it's, it's different. It's totally different. You could tell it's really good for you. And you feel clean after you, it's been on your hands. It's like a, almost like a cleanser. Uh, astringent, like f facial tonic. It's just, and it smells really good. It's just, it's an amazing fruit. Everyone should be growing it in Florida. Everyone. <clears throat> so here's a little cashew. This was one I planted last year that I never put manure next to. Big difference, right? I'm gonna pick one of these lemon uh, zest mangoes. Here it is, uh, what is it, September 3rd or 4th, 3rd, and uh, here we are picking mangoes still. I don't think they're ready yet. I could. That's why I know uh, lemon zest isn't that good of a, or it's good, and it's producing in, in, in September. That, that is the third crop. I didn't really go into depth on third, what I mean by third crop. Like the buttercream produced a good, first crop like for little tiny three-year-old trees well they're not tiny but they're uh not as big as their trees which have never produced <clears throat> they bought 15 gallons uh, six years ago and they've never produced any mangoes they water them or they used to the new lady i don't think waters them i've never seen water on over there before uh they had never produced fruit <clears throat> so jay 31 jackfruit, the lychees. Anyway, I'm not gonna go look at that. You get the idea. <laughs> I just wanted to do this video on the koi muck fruit and the, the cashew, the amazing cashew for juice. This is Eric at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm and this is Florida Natural Farming. I hope you have a wonderful day.